Shalom out to the 12 lost tribes of the nation of Israel who scattered broad greetings on an open forum this evening. So brothers and sisters who have tuned in today, we have a very special class for you today concerning the prophecy of Ami and Rama Bahama. What is that talking about? We're going to go into the Bible, and we're going to show you what this means in this prophecy. So, the Most High has showed us certain things in the prophecy of the Bible, and we have to understand that these parables and these things in the scriptures must be told to our people. So let us go into the scriptures tonight and show you what the Most High is talking about concerning this subject. Now, let's go to our opening scripture of tonight. It's in the book of Hosea, chapter 2. Let's go to Hosea, chapter 2, in the Holy Bible. Let's go there. Hosea chapter 2. The prophecy of Abu and Rahab. What does that mean? I'm going to show you this tonight on the open call because there is a controversy in this whole world about these people right here. The 12 tribes of Israel. And in this prophecy, of this part of the Bible, we're going to show you that this was talking about the 12 tribes. Now let's prove this. So let's go to Hosea chapter 2 and we're going to start at verse 1. And it says right here on the top, Israel is the Lord's unfaithful wife. <laughs> now let's go in the scriptures and show you what it's talking about. See what it says here? Say you to your brother in Ami, and to your sisters, Ruhama, plead with your mother. Plead. You hear that? What does that mean? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. Who did the Most High plead with in the Bible? To stop sinning except his people. Let's go to Hosea chapter 2, people. Hosea chapter 2, and we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2 says this. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. So in ancient times and in this time now, the elective Israel is coming to our people, and the Most High got the people of Israel listening to the prophets now because we're in the time of the end and the refreshing. So it says here to prove this that the prophets went and go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem saying, thus said the Lord. So the 12 tribes of Israel were given the law and the 12 tribes of Israel were the ones the Most High told us to go cry in your ears. Because Israel did something. And what did they do? Let's read on. I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth and the love of thy experience. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not swamped, not so. Israel was holiness unto your heart. And the first fruits of his increase. You hear that? So this parable is talking about the nation of Israel. See? The Most High brought us up out of Egypt. He gave us the law and the covenant. He was married to us in the covenant. This is what these so-called ministers and these churches and these institutions don't realize. 
This Bible is talking about the 12 tribes. See what it says here? All that devour them shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, says the house. So all our enemies throughout the captivity. And all the way up until today, they offended the Most High by going overboard with the people. And we're going to show you some of these things tonight. Hear you the word of the, uh, the Most High Yahweh, O house of, of Jacob. And all the families of the house of Israel. You hear that? So this message is to Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Shemaiah, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, and Issachar, the people of North, Central, and South America, and the islands of the sea. And those of you that are scattered abroad. This message is for you. And what does the Most High want you to do? Hear his word. So when it says that in Hosea, go cry in the ears to the mother, it was talking about the nation of Israel. The Most High sent the prophets of Israel because he, he was under covenant with us. Coming up out of Egypt, he always sent the prophets. That's why we got the books of the prophets right here. Amos. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they all went to Israel in their times of the captivity and said, Thus saith Yahweh, just like we got today. The prophets of Israel and the elect of Israel are going out teaching our people what? Showing them their abominations, and their sins, their history, or what they did to the Most High all the way until this very day we're going to bring you up to the modern day times see and it says here God said to hell what iniquity has your fathers of uh, your fathers found in me that they gone far from me and I walk after vanity and I become vain our people today are in vanities and they're in vain, vain Worshiping the Most High. So the vainness that is going on amongst the tribes today is that they do not worship the Most High in these groups. These groups that they got out here, these Kwanzaa groups, these so-called denominational groups, these so-called seminary schools, self-proclaimed prophets, Indian chiefs, uh, medicine men on the reservations. All of our people today have gone away from the house and serving vanities. The vanities are your beliefs, your tribal beliefs, your church in your neighborhood, and the false pastors and preachers that we got among us. Teaching these doctrines of devils to our people, teaching the brainwash whitewashed so-called Christianity that the white man gave the Negro from slavery unto now. The invasion of Columbus with the indigenous people known as Ephraim, the so-called Puerto Ricans, Dad, the North American Indians, all our people have been enveloped by the so-called white man. So this part of the Bible is showing you that today the people are worshiping vain things. Christmas is vain. New Year's is vain. Kwanzaa is vain. Mason tree is vain. The Baptist church is vain. Sunday service is vain. All the stuff that you do, Israel, is vain. See? And it says here, Neither do they say, Where is Yahweh that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? This is who we worship and fear. The true creator, the one power, Yahweh, the pastors and the so-called ministers and all the people that you call spiritual people, they're not talking about the most high Yahweh in the churches. They're talking about God. What God? Did not the pastors tell us in Corinthians, the gods of this world have blinded our people? This is what's going on out here. You don't know Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh but you know God and Jesus Christ. And whenever you talk about God and Jesus Christ, first thing come to people's mind is this character right here that we always bring out. 
this would come to people mind. Because when they brought this stuff to the shores of America, and they put these books in our people's minds from the Roman church, this is all they know. So you know a despoiler, fake God, the true Yahweh that brought us up out of Egypt, the preachers and ministers and on all these denominations and Kwanzaa and all this abomination that y'all are in is not teaching the Most High Yahweh's commandments, statutes, and laws. And they're not teaching about Yahweh and the churches. They're telling you he's a white man. So according to Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1, there is a controversy throughout this whole land for lying and cheating and stealing and committing adultery and murder. Blood touches blood. This is a bloody, filthy land we're living in. See? So all this stuff is going on, so the Most High said, and the, and the goodness thereof. Uh, he said, what? And that led thee through the wilderness, in verse 6, to a land, desert, and pits, to a land of drought and the shadow of death, to a land that no man passeth through, and where no man dwelleth. And I brought you into a plentiful country, to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. And when ye in it, ye defile my land and made my heritage an abomination. So that matched nobody else except the 12 tribes. This is the land of Israel. This is the land that the Most High gave us, the land of Canaan, through the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we came out of Egypt, and those 12 tribes went into that part of the earth called Canaan, called Jerusalem today by the promises that Yahweh made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the three fathers of the promise. All this goes back and reiterates back to the Holy Scriptures and those patriarchs. You see? And it says here, uh, as we go on verse 6 and verse 7, and I brought them to a plentiful country to eat the uh, fruit thereof and goodness thereof. And when you in it, you defile my land and, and I made my heritage an abomination. The priest said not, where is your hallow? And they that handled the law knew me not. See, the Most High gave us the law. And our people today don't set up every religious service to the sun god, masonry, Kwanzaa, and all these so-called denominational churches that we receive from the nations. And this is who he's talking about in the book of Hosea, chapter 2. See? And this is where we are today. So he said, cry ye out to these people. And it says they knew not the laws, and they don't know him. The pastors have also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walk after things that do not profit. So you go in the church, you're dealing with the sun god Baal. You're dealing with Islam. You're dealing with these pastors and ministers that take you into these mega churches and teach you lies. This is where the Israelites are today in the Bible, lost amongst the nations, scattered in this land and ignorant to their heritage and the power of the Most High and his salvation through Mashasha. And today the people and the pastors and the leadership is ignorant. So here we go into this uh, understanding. So when it says Israel was holiness, they were the ones that received the laws. They were chosen to be the chosen people coming up out of Egypt, and the Most High gave us some commandments and statutes and laws, and we didn't keep them. So let's go back to Hosea chapter 2, reading on. Plead with your mother. Plead with your mother. See what it says here? The Most High told Israel that they were 
his wife. So in the Bible, when it's talking about the mother, it's talking about the Israelites. And the Most High told us that in the Bible, that these things would be here on us and these words would be on us today. And Israel went into these other gods of the nations. And the Most High told us in the Bible to tell our people these things because we're in that time now. And he said, your mother, let's go to the book of Ezra and show you that the Most High called Israel his wife. And Zion, Zion, our mother, is filled with what? All types of contempt. We filled up with uh, agony, and we filled up with pain and suffering in this time. And the Most High told us to tell y'all this, because this is what this parable is about in the Bible. And we have to understand what the Most High is telling us. So let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 10, verse 7. Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 10 and verse 7. Here you go right here. It says this. How that Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness and much humble, mourning, very sore. Y'all hear that, people? This is where the Israelites are right now. They're suffering in all these different lands and all these different areas of captivity. So when it says, our mother is talking about Israel. So it says, plead with your mother, plead for it is not my wife. The most high divorced Israel because they went into other gods throughout the centuries. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1 to prove that. And they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return to her again? In the law of the Most High, if you divorce your wife, you cannot take her back again to be your wife again. That was a law. That was it was he was making a, ref, a reference to. Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return unto me, said the You hear that? So he gave us grace and mercy by sending his son, Mashasha, and he said, Return unto me. Even though you broke my commandments and you went and played the harlot with all these other gods of the nations, and you see how people doing that today. This is how this nation went down to the bottom in this captivity and hell that we in right now. See? And we ended up in all these denominations, this derision, Kwanzaa, Sunday worship, Masons, Muslims, out there, Indian chiefs, voodoo and, and Haiti, and all these so-called false, false prophets all around us. This is why we in this condition now. So he said, return unto me, and I will return unto you. So the most I want the people of Israel to understand that this is talking about the northern and southern kingdom. I mean, it's the southern kingdom of Judah, and while Haman was the northern kingdom of, of, of Israel. And when we were together, and when the tribes got taken out of there during that time of Jeroboam and Roboam, that is what this prophecy is talking about. Because all the 12 tribes of Israel right now, where are they now? In another land serving other gods. And the prophets speak about our people. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, 13. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, 13. And it says, it is written. O Yahweh, the hope of Israel. You hear that? This 
why people ain't got no hope in this world. You don't forsake the hell, the power of Israel. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And when the time comes, what are you going to do when the Howard shall come back being a black man, a Negro, and you up there in the church hooping and howling with this subliminal message of Caesar Borgia in your mind? And this is what our people problem is. You don't turn from the most high and you serve in vain. Guys, it's all banning. All this so-called worship and holidays out here, according to Psalms 42, there's holy days, Kodash Yahweh, appointed by the Most High in Leviticus chapter 23. Israel ain't doing that today. You go about the traditions of men, according to Mark 7 and 7. And this is what Israel is into today, as we read on the slide program. See what it says here? And it says, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Where are our forefathers now? All our forefathers that departed from the Most High throughout the ages, written in the Old Testament of the Bible, during the time of the Babylonians, during the time of the Assyrians, during the time of the Greeks and the Romans, and the Arab nations, and the people of Mesopotamia, the children of Ham, when Shishak came back in there and took us out of there. And what happened to all our forefathers during that time? They all died, and the remnants always came through and went into captivity, and the prophets went to them and said, this is why your forefathers are dead. This is why you're in this captivity, because your fathers forsook me. See what it says in there in Jeremiah 17, 13? And the shame and they departed from me shall be written in earth because you have forsaken the Lord Yahweh, the fountain of living waters. You hear that? That's what our people's problem is. This is why the curse is on the 12 tribes today. And this parable and this prophecy of Ami and Rahama is talking about the southern kingdom of Ami and Rahama is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel and Judah, Benjamin and Levi was down in there and Ephraim took the ten tribes during the time of the Assyrians and they went into the Assyrian captivity and there's records in the Bible to show you that the indigenous people of North, Central and South America and the islands of the sea are the lost ten tribes of Israel. Dan is over here also with Ephraim and Manasseh and Zebulon and our brother. So these things are going on right now as we speak. Let's go to the next scripture. Judges 10.13. Let's go to Judges 10.13. The prophets of prop, uh, prophesied against us and in Judges, chapter 10, verse 13, this word is on us. See what it says here in verse 13? Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. You see? And throughout the ages, our people have turned their back on the most high. This is why we're catching hell here in the Americas. Because our people forsook the most high, Yahweh Bashem Yahashah. And let's go back to Hosea chapter uh, 2, and we're in verse 3 now. And it says this in verse 3. Uh, in verse 2, we're going to finish off there. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of, uh, of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. This is what Yahweh is urging the people to do, to put away these other gods and adulterers. This is why it says in Jeremiah 17, 13, Judges 10 and 13, what the people are doing on the side of the earth to bring forth this hell that's on them right now. Verse three. 
Thus I strip her naked and serve her as in the day that she was born. Did Israel return back to captivity? Yes, we did. Let's show you the story in Ezekiel 16, 8. What the Most High said about Israel. Listen to this prophecy. Let's see if this is not talking about our people. In the 8th verse, it is written. Now when I passed by thee, I looked upon thee, and behold, thy time was a time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord Yahweh, and thou becamest mine. That happened when we came up out of Egypt, people. And these 12 tribes of Israel right here came up out of Egypt. And the most high tell you in the scriptures, the Israelites were the only people given the law and the covenant. Let's prove that. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Psalms 147, 19 and 20, it is written. And it says this, he showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob was the third father of promise from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it says, and his statutes and his judgments on the Israel. We were the only people chosen, the only people given the divine laws of life from the hands of Moses to live on this earth righteously in his eyes. He has not dealt so, uh, uh, he has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them, praise you, Yahweh. See that? That shows you right there. The Most High didn't deal with none of these other nations and give them the law. So when he came up out of Egypt, and he says that in Ezekiel 16, 8, we became his when we met him at Mount Sinai. And all the 12 tribes were there and our forefathers to witness this great event. But did we keep it? Oh, there you go. Then washed thy thee with water? Yea, and thoroughly washed away thy blood from, uh, uh, from off thee, and I anointed thee with oil. That means my, uh, the word anointed is Elijah. And uh, he anointed us, meaning he chose us. So when you hear the white man talk about Christians, the word Christian means anointed. I like So my heart or my shot. See? So when we were chosen and given the covenant and the law, that's where all these terminologies came from later on down the road when the nations called us at Antioch Christians. In, in Hebrew, we were called Macha, meaning anointed. See? And it says here, I clothed thee also with bardic works, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and covered thee with silk. We had a border in the law, dress code in the law, the border of blue, the fringes, the turbans we had, back then, the headbands. And I decked thee also with ornaments. And I put bracelets upon thy hands and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel upon thy forehead and earrings in thine ears. These are customs of Israel from the east. And a beautiful crown upon thine head. Who was our kings back in the ancient times? During the time of the empire of David and Solomon. They were the kings of Israel. After that, we had these bouncy kings, fake kings, and sinful kings into the fall of Jerusalem. And we fell in many captivities and we were destroyed as a nation in 70 AD by Titus, the Roman general, in 722 BC. The ten tribes were taken out of there by the Assyrians and the Cushites were put into our land according to 2 Kings chapter 17. And until this day, the mystery of the ten tribes and the kingdom of Judah is only known to Yahweh's prophets and himself. And we know where they are according to the books of Genesis and according to the book of Ezekiel. And the mysteries of the scriptures were revealed to our elders. 
and he gave this knowledge and trusted us in this knowledge of the gospel to come out and teach our people this is known as the elect are going to know these things. The rest of our people are going to be born. See what it says here? Verse 13. Thus was our debt for gold and silver, and that remnant was fine linen and silk and brought it forth. And thou didst eat fine flour and honey. We had a, we had a dietary law. We ate good food, according to the books of the Leviticus. And all. And thou didst see it be beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. That's talking about Israel. When were we in our kingdom? The Greeks talk about Alexander. The Romans talk about the Caesars. The Babylonians talk about Nimrod and Ceramicus and uh, Hammurabi. So where's our history, people? There ain't no people in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible called black people, Indian people, Haitian people, Dominican people. All these labels are put on you by the enemy. You will call Yasha Allah, the princes of the power. Yahawada, Ben uh, 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 Judah, so-called Negro, Ben Yam Yam, sons of the right, the so-called West Indian people. All these things going all the way down to Issachar, we had names, we had a dress code, we had a heritage, and we were under David and Solomon during the height of our kingdom. But what did we do, people? Here you go right here. And thou and all went among all among the heathen for thy beauty. Everybody knew at one time that we were the twelve tribes of Israel. For it was perfect through my comings, which I put upon thee, saith the Lord Yahweh. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and play up the harlot because of thy renown. We got famous. And we started sinning. And we forsook Yahweh that made us. You see? And this is what happened to our people. We got big headed. We thought it was all about us. But the most I tell you right up in that verse right there. But it was uh, verse 14. It was perfect through my comeliness. Which I had put upon thee, said the Lord. Everything Yahweh gave us. We got arrogant, beheaded, and we forgot him for something. We forgot he made us like that. He took away the blood. He cleaned us up. He anointed us. Gave us a law on how to live, how to worship, how to deal with our women and the other nations. This Bible would have been our commandments and laws in the sight of the nations, it says in the book of Deuteronomy. And all nations would have said, the Israelites are wise people. Today, what do we look like today? A derision people. An ignorant people. A people with no direction, no vision. A people that's robbed and spoiled. Because everything we own here and everything that's here that we got doesn't belong to us. These are the leaves of the nations on our people now as Adam and them had leaves on them from the nations and the God. So in this time, we're in the same sort of scenario. See? So we played the harlot. We got souped up. Let's go back to Hosea. Chapter 2. And we went in verse 3. Let's uh, strip her naked and they uh, see her as in the day that she was born. So now the most high, like he says in Deuteronomy, Chapter 28, verse 68, he stripped us down and brought us back to the time when we, were, when we came up under our youth. What does that mean? That the Most High broke us down and brought us into captivity. What is saying Deuteronomy 28, 68, the last curse of the law? And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt, means bondage, again. Because we were in Egypt for 430 years, a whole 12 tribes served under Ramses. And they oppressed us, and we came up out of there, and we became a nation. 
but there was a stipulation inside the covenant and the law. If we did not serve Yahweh and reverence him for the war of all things, he said we were going to serve our enemies and be deported and kicked out of the Holy Land of Jerusalem and into another land as it is this day. So now we're back in captivity, people. And this is what the Most High said that we, the tribes are going through right now. Listen to this. And he said here, They make her a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. Lack of knowledge, Hosea 4 and 6, we have. We've been put to sleep for a dispensation of time. And I will not have mercy upon our children, and they sh uh, shall be the children of hornets. Look at our kids today. Don't you know the kids today are following what you taught them in the hornets? Did not the most high say it in the Bible to teach our children the law according to Psalm 70, 78 verse 5? Pass on the commandments from generation to generation. Here today, the sons of Hordens are in Israel. The indigenous people, the so-called ten tribes, they're in the Hordens. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, known as Ami and Wahama, is talking about the nation of Israel, the northern and southern kingdom. And today, the children of Israel are in Hordens still. And this is why we're catching hell in my life. All over the Americas, man. And here we are in this condition right now. For their mother has played the harlot. Israel, you played the harlot. Who is the mother? According to the book of Ezra, Zion. You don't run away from the Most High and you join under other gods. Bow, Sunday worship, and so forth. Like we showed you in the sun. And all our people right now today are in an idol god or a doctrine of devil. Throughout North, Central, and South America and the islands of the sea. And it says here, She that conceived them has done shamefully. But she said, I will go after my lovers. You're going after your lovers right now. Your lovers are the other nations. You love Caesar Borgia. You love captivity. These people are dangerous to our people. And we love the so-called white man, and we love oppression, and we love this system that the Lord says that we're in right now. We're in this system right now, and we love it. And we love hell. See that? And this is where we are right now. Let's go to Jeremiah 22. 22. Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 22. I'll tell you about these old fake pastors. Here they go right here. The wind shall eat up thy pastors. You hear that? All this whoredom y'all got from your grandmother, your grandfather, passed out by Pastor Jones, Sister Hancock, Farrakhan, Roy Amos. Jason Jackson, whoever, Gino Jackass, his father passed down that church to him. They got it from the slaves. The slaves got it from the slave master, which is a so-called white man when they came over after the Renaissance and portrayed themselves as the children of God and still under this very day, they're teaching them blasphemy. See what it says here again? Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 22. It says what? The wind shall eat up thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Look, the white man and all nations going into slavery. So if y'all married to them nations out there, when the time comes when the Lord returns, he's going to separate all nations and put Israel in the kingdom and all the nations going into captivity. This is what they're teaching in the so-called denominational churches. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Let's go to Matthews in the New Testament and show you that the Lord is going to separate Israel from all other nations. 
And they're not reading this to y'all on Sunday service. We're going to read it to you. Here you go right here. Let's go to Matthews chapter 25. Matthews chapter 25, and we're going to start at verse 31. Matthews 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, Yahweh shall coming back here in the last days. Yahweh is going to be with him, according to Titus chapter 2. And it says here, And all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. In that day, Yahweh shall, shall sit upon his throne of glory, Hakahah, in Jerusalem. And the twelve tribes, the twelve disciples, and the remnant of Israel, and the 144,000, according to Revelation 14, shall rule this earth righteously forever. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Y'all hear that? The Hanawama, the nations, is the other people on the earth, other than Israel. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. So we're going to be separated from the goats. Who is the he goat in the body? There's going to be a separation of the white man and the black man finally, according to biblical judgment of Yahweh in the day of indignation. And we're going to get our women back, and we're going to get our brothers back according to Ezekiel 16, 59. Not by your covenant, Israel. What's your covenant? My opinion. My church. What my pastor taught me. All this going to burn. The, these so-called pastors of yours are wind. They're not teaching y'all nothing. They're just running their mouth every su Sunday. The clowns of rights are off. The Muslims is off. The denominational churches are off. And you also got false prophets amongst the Israelites today. You got brothers out here running out here saying anything and everything they want coming out their mouth. But the most high going to deal with all false prophets according to 2 Peter chapter 2 in a very short time. If you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. Thus, say Yahweh, Bahashem, Bashasha. And this is what the Most High is showing us in this Bible, people. See what it says here? And he's going to separate everybody one from another. So, separation is coming. And these are things that the Lord told us in the Bible. So let's go back to Hosea, the vision of the kingdom of Judah and Israel, which is Ami, the southern kingdom of Judah, and Rahama, which is the north. And today, you see that the northern and southern kingdom of Israel is where? In the land of the north, in captivity. Now watch this. Let's go back to Hosea, chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 4. And I will have had, I will not have mercy upon our children, for they are the children of whoredoms. This is where we are today. For, for their mother has played the harlot. Israel has played the harlot with all types of idols, books, and other gods. She has conceived, or uh, she that conceived them have done shamefully. You living in the time of cabal. Let me show you an example of that. You don't think this is shame? This one ain't got no integrity of law anymore. Look at this. Look at this. What is this? Negroes. This is a new image of the black man today. A faggot. Where they learn this from? Europeans. Where you end up at? Dead. Homos and lesbians, according to the book of Jude, seven verse, shall be destroyed as Sodom and Gomorrah was amongst our people. This is the new image of the so-called black man. You were a damn man and a man and a woman and a woman. All of them wrote about that in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 26 on down. They said, in these last days, they're going to come out the closets and they're going to be running around, men with men, women and women. This is a new faggot vibration in Israel. 
That's why the Lord said he's going to make a man in these last days more precious than the gold of Ophir because of what's going on out here today, people. It's shame and cabal. Here you go. See what it says here? Uh, but she said, I will go after my lovers. You keep loving these nations. You keep going after Caesar Borgia. You keep going after other gods. You're going to be destroyed. Do y'all understand that? This is talking to the nation of Israel. See? And it says, reading on, They gave me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Look what's going on today. Negroes are selling out because they're working for the white man. So now you become a homeborn slave, Israel. And now you making money, so you're teaching this. You making money, so you pushing this. Our people done sold the hell out. Now they doing this. Pagans. They got the denominational churches going on, making millions of dollars up in this damn place right here called a mega church. It's all about money. Tell you that the book of Micah. They preach for hire and money. And that ain't going to save you, man. You brothers got them big mega churches. You got millions of people following you. The Lord said in the last days, it's going to be a small remnant coming through the straight gate. Because wide is a way of destruction, but now is a way of truth. And everybody going to follow this until they death. The ones that the Lord called in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12 on down, one of a city and two of a family, and he's going to take you to Zion. The new Zion is going to be the new Jerusalem in the new kingdom. See? Let's read on. What about the prophecy? Therefore, Yo, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall. Y'all see what's going on in southern, in the southern states? This is prophecy right now. The welcome mat. Feds build massive tent city outside El Paso for Biden's open border. You hear that? The wall is built down there. Trump wanted to build a wall. The Democrats said, no, don't build a wall, let them in. Now, the people are coming here from the tribes of Israel in the south, from the South America, and what are they doing? They're running into a wall. Millions of our people are trying to escape tyranny, drug dealers, all right, murder, rape, and uh, uh, idolizations of these nations. The Spaniards set up Brazil. The Spaniards set up Mexico. The Spaniards set up Central American democracies and dictatorships, drugs, and murder all through these lands. And now, Israel going ran into a war. We all ran into a wall. Let's show you the Lord said that we were all into this thing together. First we got it, and then the other tribes came over and got some. Here you go right here. Let us go to Jeremiah chapter 50, uh, uh, 50 verse 33. Listen to this, people. Thus saith Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. All that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So we've been through this. The slavery, let me hit y'all with something. After the emancipation, the tribe of Israel known as Ami, which are the southern kingdom of Judah, when we were over here in the States, back in the 1800s, what happened to many of our forefathers that left the plantations? Any scholars in the audience? A lot of them got lynched. A lot of them got killed. 
And now the northern kingdom is coming to the Americas. And what are they doing? After their emancipation and this captivity, they put us on ropes. We went out from the plantations and had nowhere to go. We went into towns, start stealing and, and, and going to the white man's crops. They rounded us up and they had what they call lynch mobs and they killed our people. So now, what's gonna happen to our people coming from Mexico, Central America, South America, and the islands of the sea? The same thing. Once they start coming here, and this border is wide open, let's go to the book of Nahum 313. Let's go to Nahum 13. It's prophesied in the Bible that this white man was gonna be ruling like this, and he was gonna have this border wide open. Listen to this prophecy. Nahum, the prophet, chapter 3, verse 13. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are as women. What America done turn into? Effeminate women making decisions. The men here in America are not as the leaders they had back in the 20s and 30s and 40s. If Roosevelt was here, he would have got on a horse took the Marines down there, and they would have built the wall themselves to stop people from coming there and regulated it. Trump tried to do it, but what happened? The Democrats were a bunch of liberal, faggot-loving, sign bills for hormones, and this is the evil that they got going on in the government. Both sides are evil. The Democrats and the Republicans are calling the Revolution 1311. So there's no righteous government here in America. So they're letting all these brothers and sisters into this country. And now they came here thinking that this is a land full of milk and honey. But what really is it? This is a land of our captivity. Let's go to show you what they're doing in the 13th verse. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. So now the border is open. Now the tribes are ran into a wall. Now they're coming here and they're sleeping in the street and it's 20 degrees outside. What do you think is going to happen to them little babies and women? They're going to be freezing to death. Where are we, people? Are we in heaven or are we in hell? The white man taught you in church that my life, hell, was a place on the ground. Guess what, people? Let's go to the Bible and show you what Mawa is. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 13. I'm going to show you what Mawa is. They don't ran in their fall. Let's go to Isaiah 5, 13. This is where the tribes are together. We all press together. Now, the tribes that came from Wahama, the northern kingdom, I mean, is... The southern kingdom, Judah. Judah done been through this already. Our forefathers were lynched, killed, castrated. Our women were raped in the 1865 all the way up until the 1900s. And things started getting politically different in 1960s when we went to the civil rights struggle. And that's what our people turned toward in these last days, and it destroyed our families. It destroyed the so-called black man. It ran the black man out the house. The black women became... You see a lot of sisters that turn toward lesbianism. See? And this whole system that destroyed our people. But only a remnant coming up out of here. Is this heaven for us? No. This is what the most high says. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. It is written. What did he say about this place? Isaiah 5 and uh, 13. Here it go right here. Therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge.
Y'all hear that? This is why we came into this. This is why the Americas were invaded by Columbus. And our people, the Ten Tribes, were subjugated to Spanish dogs. Because we did not keep the knowledge of Yahweh by Hashem, Hashasha, Jesus Christ, Yahweh And our people forsook the Most High, and the whole nation is under this vibration right now. See? Isaiah 5.13, and it says, they have no knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6 goes with this. And their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. The multitude of our people, the majority of our people, don't know what's in this Bible. You go to them and say, read this, I pray thee, in Isaiah 29, and they go, it's sealed. But in Amos chapter 3, or I can tell you how about Shemasha, he said, I'm going to show my secrets to my servants, to prophets. And according to Romans chapter 11, the Most High said, the elect going to receive this, but the rest of our people, they blinded. So thank the Most High that you part of the elect and you're coming through that straight gate, man, and you're learning this. See what it says here? And it says, uh, for verse 14, therefore, what? The word hell, my law in Hebrew, is not a kingdom underground. Where's hell at? When we came in captivity and slaves, when the white man invaded the Americas, and welcome mat. This is a welcome mat for the ten tribes. Tents, false dreams, and false promises. When you come here, people, and we telling our people from the other tribes, there ain't no jobs here. You got to pay rent. So all that charity going to run out. And what you think they're going to do with the people there? What they did to us? The same curse that's on the northern kingdom is on the southern kingdom. Because as a whole, all the Israelites are under this vibration. He said, what? Therefore, my God has a large herself. Hell, and open up her mouth without measure and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. This is where we are, people, and this is where the tribes from the south are coming to. So, Ami and Rahama and that prophecy of Hosea was talking about the nation of Israel the 12 tribes, breaking the Most High Commandments, going into whoredoms, turning it back on the Howard. Still to this day, they are still in whoredoms. But the Most High going to do what? He got a remnant coming out of here. Let's go to Isaiah 54, verse 7. Let's go to Isaiah 54, verse 7, people. This is what Yahweh got promised for the remnant. This is what it says. It is written. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies when I gathered thee. Y'all hear that? So now we're in time, the time of the gathering. The gathering is coming to the land of Israel and the people that used to live there, the daughter of Zion. That's what it's talking about. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Is it going to be a, a lot of us? No. It is prophesied in the Bible. Only a remnant coming up out of here, people. Only a remnant. Only the elect and those that are chosen, those that conform to this, those that submit to it and come learn about it and get the seal in your head are going to be saved out of here. Keeping commandments, doing the works of Mashasha, walking the way he did, this will get you saved. Walking in this will get you burned. This is when, see, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 says this, except the left unto 
but to us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. What does the Lord mean by that? This. Do y'all understand that? If the Lord don't raise up a remnant of us, the rest of us gonna go the way of faggots and lesbians, school dogs, turn into uh, uh, dykes, died from AIDS. Israel is dying out right now. Only one third of us get out of here. Two thirds gonna die. Millions and millions of our people ain't gonna make it on this side, brothers and sisters. And we have to tell you this coming up out of the Bible because this is the time that we're living in according to prophecy. Let's go to Isaiah 127. It says this. Zion shall be redeemed with judgments and our converts with righteousness. This is what we have to do. Converts meaning the ones of us that heard this knowledge, like it says in Acts 319, we convert back to the Most High's laws, your nationality, you grow in the knowledge of the Most High, and you do the works in Mashashah's name, and we do this into the end. And that's how the Most High said in this scripture, the converts with righteousness. That's talking about the ones that come in, the remnant of Israel. This is how you're going to get out of this captivity, brothers, by converting back to your nationality, keeping the commandments and the faith of Mashasha, doing the works in his name, and believing. See? So let's go to Psalms 9, verse 10. Psalms, chapter 9, verse 10. Psalms, chapter 9, verse 10. It is written. Psalms, chapter 9, verse 10. It says this. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, O Yahweh, has not forsaken them that seek thee. What's the most high name, people? Yahweh. What's his son's name? Yahweh Shah, Mashasha, Ayayasha. And the Lasha one Kodash. That's how you say his glorious name, the name of his son. According to Proverbs chapter 3. This is the way the Most High want us to deal with this time that we're living in. Because in these last days, don't trust in men. Don't trust this government. Go to Jeremiah 17, 5. Trust in your home by Shimei Hashem with all your heart and with all your soul. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, 5. It is written. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make the flesh his arm, and, uh, and make flesh his arm, and whosoever is part departed from Yahweh. Don't depart from the faith of Yahweh. Don't turn away from it. If the whole camp leaves, Keep doing the work, man. I was in a large camp, one of the largest camps in Israel, besides 44th and Broadway called the Sons of Thunder. Over the years, the most high said in uh, Amos chapter 9, he gonna sift the house of Israel, man. I had brothers and my family fall out, brothers that I thought were mighty men fall out. He said, he didn't do it to the end. Shall be saved. So you must endure. Do the work of an evangelist. Save yourself from this untoward generation, man. Because we're living in the last days. So this is a prophecy, brothers and sisters, of Ami and Rahama. This was talking about the northern and southern kingdom of Israel. And right now, the 12 tribes of Israel are in captivity and in Mawa. But the Most High said a remnant is coming out of this captivity in the last days. So make your calling sure by keeping what's written in this book. Mm -hmm. Don't believe no lies. Don't believe the false prophets among us. Believe what these scriptures is saying. Like it says in Romans chapter 3, 
what if some don't believe? Does that make the Lord's word another effect? Mm -mm. What if brothers come with a different 12 tribe sign and a different breakdown? Should you listen to them? What if brothers say, I'm the comforter? What if they say, we the black panthers, black power? He said, don't listen to them. Listen unto me. Look unto me and be ye saved, saith Jehovah, by Hashem HaShem. And he said, how do you know, how do you know if the prophet is coming to you in his name? Listen to this. This is the final scripture of the night, and I'm going to show you this prophecy is true, and this book is true. This message is the spirit of truth coming from the house of Hashem HaShem. Let's go to Deuteronomy, chapter 18. This is how you know when a prophet is coming to you, man. Let's, let's read what the Lord says about that. This is his answer to you. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And let's start at uh, verse 21. It is written. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the, wo the word which the Lord has spoken? When a prophet speak up in the name of Yahweh, and if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is not the thing which Yahweh has not or has not spoken. But if the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Don't believe everything people tell you. Believe in what these scriptures tell you, brother. And what time is it? In the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12, it says, It's time for you to seek Yahweh by Shema Hashasha and come back and return unto the Most High Yahweh, asking for forgiveness and keep his commandments. And the two greatest commandments Yahweh taught us is to love him and fear him and love your neighbor of your people in Israel as thyself. So Shalom La Awa Allah, meaning peace be unto you, brothers. In the name of Yahweh, Bashem, Bashasha, and enjoy your journey in Yahweh, Bahashim Shasha. Shalom.